Hey, what's up everyone? Chip here. Hey, what I want to talk about now is how we create this kind of a stone texture. So Alamo Reality is a project we're working on. You can go to this blog. There's a lot of stuff in here, but in particular, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create this kind of elaborate stone, stone texture based on uh, 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 in Unity with some shaders. Now forget the ground. The ground stuff's not complete yet, but I'm trying to figure out how to, how to add this stone texture to very simple, simple geometry, right? So <clears throat> it's a, an interesting challenge uh, when we're trying to use low polys to define our models uh, so that we can play them back on mobile, like what we're trying to do. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the model that we're working with. So uh, earlier I showed you how to UV map this. Now this model that I'm going to actually take, I'm going to basically take this into 3D code, voxelize it, and add a lot of texture to it. Then I will be jumping into substance uh, for the last part of this. Um, so as I look at this, um, you can see that this model is quite a bit different than the other one. The other one, I didn't need these bottom. The other one was the model that we're going to actually put inside of Unity. This model is, as you can see, uh, these are all solids. In fact, if I double click on, if I just click on this and hit this button, it'll say, oops, I have some, okay, now <laughs> I have some internal faces, fixed it. But these are all, these should be all, all solids, right? So I should be working with like, you know, with all solids. So, so uh, uh, because they're all solids, and I think even this is a solid. Let me see. Oh no, this one's not. This will actually. I need to go ahead and make fix this. So pause it while I fix this. Okay, so that's fixed. Now we can look at this and say it's a solid. Solid inspector is great for that stuff. So uh, now that we have this all set up as a solid, I'm going to export it select it i also want to make sure i don't select it while it's in here right i can't select all this stuff select all this like this and export it because it won't maintain the origin correctly so i want to basically keep this origin for the same for all of these so i'll select this command uh, basically file export as a 3d model an obj this is the fence in the fence i'm gonna call it a 3dc object because i'm gonna open this up in, as a solid in 3dc so Okay, so now that's done, we're going to launch 3D code. And uh, in here, let's see, let's position this quickly. Okay, so in here, what we want to do is we want to do some voxel sculpting. And I'm going to go in here and open this, this file. Okay, so okay it's going to come in here a couple things i want to do is first i want to make sure i get the right number of polygons on the model so i'm going to hit this button over here make sure i'm in surface mode and i'm going to say import without voxelization so that's and then i'm going to hit apply okay and then i want to say yeah because i want to keep the scale where it is so i'll go to draw mode now you can see if i if i if i select the top one shift a it'll zoom into that uh and then i can hit the f key while it's hovering and I'll see all the stuff that's going on. So this is my model. It looks pretty crappy right now, but I'm not too worried because it's got everything I want. Um, uh, I've got, let's see, this one, H, H. So this is this is that, that gate and this is gate. These are two different objects that I'm gonna wanna keep out of here. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename it gate one. And this is, these are old, washed up or, or, or walls that were washed up in the Alamo original and then I hit the H key while hovering over this one I get the next one and I'm gonna call this gate two and then to move these I'm gonna move them up by just dragging them above here gate one I use this little drag item and then drop it right on top of the actual object so now so now I've got this one so this one I want to say I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say merge subtree no booleans so this will happen pretty fast so now if I turn the rest of these off, you'll see that this is what I have, which is fine. Um, and uh, actually, let's undo that. Let's add this well, this well one time H. So I'm going to add that well. Okay, so let's drive that well. 
and I'll move him up to up here too. So we've got the well. So now let's turn all these off. And again, we're going to go into this fence. And these are these are everything's everything's. Let me think about that. Let me actually let's just <laughs> long here. I'll go look at this H. And that's the uh, these are the brace. Okay, so I'm going to actually create a uh, let's see at this level. I'm going to create a new one called braces. And here's my brace. And drag that onto the plus sign, puts it down there. Then turn that. Okay, then we get this one. H that brace. Okay. And uh, I'm going to drag this one again onto this plus sign, moves it down to there. And then this one is H. Again, hit the H key. And we've got brace again. And we'll drag that right out of there. Okay, so let's let's hide the braces. Now these are all our, this is our wall. So this looks pretty good. Um, let me think. There's anything else I want to possibly? I think we're probably in pretty good shape there. So um, what I'm going to do is I want to see what kind of numbers of polygons I can use to get this wall to look right. Uh, so I'll first go into here and before I say. Uh, Merge subtree, no boolean. So it's going to take all the rest of these objects and merge them into here. And I'm going to save this and I'll call it East Fence 01. Okay, so okay, so here's my here's my uh, object with no booleans. Now, once I've got that done, with it selected, I hit the enter key, and it's going to ask me well, how many boolean, how many uh, polygon or how many voxels do I, or polygons do I want for this. So I'm going to put I'm going to go something high like four or five million five one two three one two three okay okay so let that box lies and when it's done it'll crisp and this whole thing will just sharp will get very sharp very quickly while i'm wait ah, there we go okay while i'm waiting for that let me just show you real quickly something else you may have noticed that i've got all these little lines in here drawn in here the reason for that is that when you start to when, when, when 3D coat triangulates this, and these lines, these are what I call helper lines, aren't in there, it's going to basically get really thin little slivers running all the way across from from here all the way to there. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be, and it's going to make it really tough to uh, accurately voxelize and or texturize. So I always add in, in very in uh, in more of these complex, you know, uh, models. I do try and add these kind of these helper lines, especially when there's a lot of vertices that you're going to work work with. So these helper lines are really important for uh, generating uh, accurate, good geometry. So let's go back to here. So this is what we have here. So you can see this is actually pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do now is now that I've got this as an S, I want to voxelize it. So I just click on the S button. Now it's right now it's a surface, right? And if I hit the if I hit the V, I voxelize it. It says it wants five million polys for this. I'm going to make it a little more. I'm going to make it like seven. I always like sharp. I can always dull it out. And also to help my the higher the voxel limit, the the better the actual ac action is going to be up for my brushes. So let's go ahead and let this thing cook for a little bit, and uh, uh, It'll be done. Okay, now what's it's done? I've got this thing. It's weird shading. What happened? Went into voxel mode. The last tool that it was using in voxel mode was this import tool. So I just need to click on something. I'm going to click on the carve button, but I get out of that tool. So that's when, that's the reason why you're seeing that. So it took me a while to figure that one out. So I'm going to carve. I'm going to basically say invert it. I'm going to go to my brush, and I want to use this this kind of uh, random scratches br brush. Is what I'll use. I'm going, to, I'm going to carve it. So I'm going to go turn off perspective and uh, hit the F key to let's just start with this one right here. So if I uh, oops, if I start and I'm going to put a depth of about two here. So I'm just going to start rubbing around on this. So so what I'm doing is I'm creating kind of creating a funky texture as you can see. 
And then I can, of course, you know, drag my my mouse down. If I see something like here I went too far in, I might hold the Alt key down. And now I'm actually adding texture on top of that. So, so what we're doing is we're just gonna now. Uh, when I look at this, this is a really this is a very simple polygon, but I want to make this look a lot more uh, rough than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start. Oops. Undo. I've got depth is too high. Let's try this. Okay, and I can I, again. I can put. I kind of tend to put some. You know, I can just come in here, knock off these edges a little bit. I hold the Alt key down to build, and then you know I can just kind of sculpture. As you see, I'm just knocking this stuff off just real quickly. Now I will have normal maps and some other stuff that's going to fix this also. So I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I don't need to be too accurate here, but uh, you know. Just trying to trying to add some stuff here, um, and you can see right now I've got some cut through here, which I can, which which really is not going to be a big deal. I mean, when we start baking this texture, of course that will never be revealed, so not to worry. So I'm just going to cut a little more here. I'm going to go back to depth, make it maybe make about three, and then kind of do this. Uh, hold the alt key down a little bit so you get a little build up also. And again, so you see what I'm doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, quit talking and I'll record this and you can see what we're doing. Uh, I may pause at some point to explain something if I do it. So I'll shut up now. Okay, so uh, uh, now I've kind of finished this one, and what I want to do is I'm going to move, um, I'm going to turn the Vox Hide function. I'm going to use Vox Hide to, uh, uh, once I've kind of finished one, I'm going to hide it so that it, so it doesn't get in the way of those. Like I want to get over to this side, and so the way to do that is you go down to Vox Hide. We're going to select this this uh, this button right here, which is the vertex lasso, and I can just go like this. And I do this, and now that's hidden. Now, I, if I want to show it again, I go to Geometry and say uh, invert, uh, Unhide All, or I can Delete Hidden, or I can Objectify Hidden, which puts Hidden on a new layer. If I Objectify Hidden, I still have the hidden thing. I, don't, I haven't moved it. I've just copied it to a new layer. So if I want to actually move it, I've got to Objectify Hidden, and then Delete Hidden. That's something that takes a while to figure out. But um, So, uh, okay, so I'm going to... Go quiet again and finish up this wall here. Now, one way uh, that we can find out every time we, we do this, we're adding more voxels, right? So if I hit the uh, Command R, or I think it's let's see, re resample is out. Let's see, let's go to the very bottom of this. I think it's down here. Resample, I have it set. So I hit resample, it's going to tell me I've got seven, eight million. As I keep doing this, this number is going to go up. So, so some people may wonder uh, or may ask why I'm doing this in voxel mode and not in. Uh, uh, and not in surface mode because surface mode you certainly have more control. But the reason I'm using voxels is twofold. One is that uh, this model will actually have a, its own high level normals put on by a shader I wrote in Unity. So uh, it's it's it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. And of course, voxels are going to allow me to to actually uh, do more destruction if uh, faster, meaning. You can modify the geometry significantly faster using voxels than you can. It's not as accurate, but it, it certainly, in my case, I'm not really looking for accuracy. I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for uh, something more along the lines of just destruction. Notice I, I, I filled over this hole, and you're thinking, well, what's that mean? Well, when I bake this on top, 
it won't really matter uh, because the actual geometry is going to have a hole. So this this fill won't matter, make a big difference. How we bake, so keep on going. So let's talk about. Uh, let's, I'm going to look at. Let's look at this for instance. I'm going to I'm going to take this and hold the alt key down, and I'm going to grab this and do something like this. Okay, up. I made a big mistake. How do I fix that? Well, there's a couple ways, right? So I can hold this down and find a view where there, right there, and I can go to this uh, this where is it cut off, right? So the cut off, and I can in this case we'll just use a rectangle cut off, and I can just go in here and actually just do this and cut it off. That's one way of doing it, right? But sometimes it may have like a lot more than that. And so what I can do also is I like using this tool called the plane tool, right? So I go in plane and I'm plane defined by three points. So I'll hit pick and I'm going to have one point right there, which is that red point. The green point I'm going to put right here. And then the blue point I'm going to put over here. I know these are all. So now once I've got that done, I can reduce this and I'll have to in invert it. And you'll see that as I see whoop, depth fall off. Yeah. So now, uh, okay. So let's, let's look at what we're doing there. So if I go back into the plane mode, we'll see that what I'm actually doing when I do this is I'm actually cutting it off, but I'm not getting, I'm not getting all of the things. I have to actually touch these parts. So I'm actually, if you can see, I've smoothed that part out underneath it. I just haven't gotten the red, the rest of it off. So that's fairly easy to do. I can again go back to the cutoff tool and uh, I can cut it off. But I use that a lot. If, I, if I've just got too much buildup going on in a particular place, I'll use that. What I'm doing here is I'm actually under I'm creating a uh, underlay for the actual limestone bricks that I'm going to put in here in a second. So you can see I got a hole, pretty good size hole there. So I'm going to go into the fill, and I think I can just go in here and just fill that out kind of nicely. And in here also. And then I can just go over here, do my cutoff. So there you go. Get it. Works pretty good. And then I'll go and grab my carve, move it down. And I really just want to put some kind of texture all over this. There's another pretty good hole so I'll go ahead and again use the fill fill can come in here and fix that while I'm in here let's go to carve let's just kind of carve out some of this hold the shift key down maybe smooth it a little bit okay there's a lot of touch up that'll do by the way I just I just toggle back in the lighting mode I think it's yeah here it is it's in uh Geometry cast shadows. So sometimes I just go back and forth between these two, give me a little better view of what I'm doing, depending on. So some things, sometimes these little ridges right here, I won't really fill them because they're actually going to actually create some kind of interesting textures uh, when we bake them in. So.
here's where I'll use that plane. I got a little mess up area here. So I'm going to use this plane again. Pick my red dot. Pick my green dot. Pick my blue dot. And then let's just kind of go over here. And if it's not getting one, we use the invert tool and we'll get the other. So this kind of resets this spa the space, if you don't understand. So I'm just going to come in here and reset this. Invert it again, and that's going to cut, so that'll get, get rid of this. There you go. So, then we go back to my carve. So. Okay, so I've got this done. I'm going to go into my geometry and uh, unhide all so I can see all the stuff. So I've got, I think I got just about everything done the way I want it. So that's for this particular uh, object. So this is at 0.7. That's that's our, uh, our uh, density in voxels, right? So I'm going to turn this off and let's go to the gates. And it'd be nice to make that 0.7. I'm not really sure how to do that, but I, I know that I can certainly uh, uh, select it, hit return, give it a million polygons. And I think we'll see where that gives us. So there. And then if I hit the V, a million. And that's one. So that's a little higher resolution. So it'll be a little bit different. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually I'm actually changing the uh, I'm gonna change the normals here so that this doesn't have that quite that faceted look to it. When we actually bake these, we're gonna actually get it so that it's gonna be much more rounded looking as opposed to having this kind of faceted look. So I'm actually adding I'm adding uh, carving. I'm adding. Now I'll uh, merge the subtree. No booleans. Hit enter. Let's give it about two, two million maybe. And see what that does. Okay, let's go ahead and save incrementally here while we're at it. Okay, so and we hit the V for voxels. Okay, we're good. And we're getting close to being able to finish with this part of the 
uh, the process. Okay, uh, now that we're done, this actually uh, would be, uh, I could combine all of these models, and I'll show you how we do that in a second, but uh, now would be a good time to export this if I was just creating like an Adobe brick uh, model. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's move these over. This down. We can kind of get a better view of this. Um, There you go. So you can see in here that I've got a lot of different kinds of textures here in this. And this is what I'm building. Uh, this is, uh, I don't have this Alighton set up, but in particular, I want you to look at these two, these two models right here. This one's an Adobe brick model. And this is an, a, this one is a, uh, this one is more of a, uh, uh, limestone. And with a limestone, we need to have these, uh, the brick, the limestone brick shown, whereas the Adobe, it's just a standard old a brick and it's not, you know, so we have two different kind of textures in the limestone. We have this, we have kind of a, uh, a limestone texture here. And then also we have this normal map and occlusion map. And really that's what we're going to bake onto there is we're going to bake that normal map and occlusion map. So you look, look over here. This is kind of the same thing, right? We've kind of got the same thing going on over here. This is a more of a limestone look. Uh, this one does not have a, uh, it doesn't have the plaster or the uh, stucco, which is this white stuff, right? So we, this is kind of a, a unusual shader with the, the that we're going to use, but we do need to build. So we need to build into our voxel model. We need to build some of this geometry, which is, you know, it gives us these, you know, it gives us these lines in here. So that's the next thing that we're going to do. To do that, uh, we want to actually cut into this model with a pattern, right? So what I've done is I've created an OBJ pattern and I've dumped it into my models here. Uh, and let's see, it's in the, uh, what is it? Geometry models, I think. Here it is right here. So this uh, is what I'll use to to make those in. So let's go back out. Here it is. And actually let's turn on, let's turn on this whole thing. So we get an idea of what, so what I've done is I've loaded it, right? So I've just, it's just like I had imported. It's the same thing as imported. Just click on that. It's like, it's importing it. So I'm going to scale it. Here we are. We're scaling it. So it's a probably something like this. You can start to see, it looks like some kind of fancy cookie cutter. You can see that. So that was built in SketchUp. Uh, my partner, Michael McGar, actually built the Illustrator file, and then I just extruded it in SketchUp. So that's a project for another time. So what I want to do now is, let's see, let's go back to here, rotate the Y90, rotate the Z, not scale. There we go. Now, while it's still in this selected, I want to basically go to the top view, make sure my perspective is turned off. And uh, I'm going to move this very close. So I know that these are pretty much right angles here. So what I'm going to do is get this very close here and I'll click on this and I'm going to move it so that I can see about how close I'm getting. And then I can move this down so you can see that as I go the total way, you know, it looks like I'm going a little bit too far. So 
if we're going to look at the uh, drag it all the way down here yeah that looks pretty good so uh, once I have that I'm going to go ahead and hit hit this I want this to be a surface I don't want to be voxels because it just voxels are going to be too heavy for this so I'll take a surface and uh, and then I import without voxelization and I hit apply and we'll go to the draw menu and then I'm just gonna make this a different color and I'm gonna call this one let's just call it cutter okay and then let's uh, this is called I'm gonna call this main it's the main fence okay so if I turn off the rest of this, the gate and the well and the, this gate and the braces. So now we have the main fence. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take this cutter, select it, and uh, transform it. Now when I hit the transform button, this thing is going to change right here. So I want this to align um, <clears throat> to the view. And I don't think if I do anything, I don't think that... I might, I don't know, let's hit this main, oh, that works, okay, hit main axis, that gets it to where I want it, so, okay, <laughs> didn't know that was going to work, good. Now, now what I want to do is move it over here, and I want to actually pull it in just a tiny bit. Now, I'm looking at this, and I want to look at this side, and see, does that look about right, that does look like about the right scale, I don't think I need to change the scale much, I'm not, I could change it just a tad like maybe that there and then we've got to go back over here down and then I can take this and hold the shift key down and this is not going to rotate the, the mesh it's just going to rotate I'm just rotating the gizmo that's all I'm doing with the shift key down okay so there we're good now let's go look at this so that looks like we're pretty deep. I don't want it to be quite that deep. So I'll move it out to about right there. I just want something barely touching, right? And look at that. We're barely touching on that side too, so we're good. So then I'll take this and I'll duplicate it. I'll hide the new one. I'll go to the cutter. I'll right click on it and I'll say subtract from and I'll go main. So I didn't have to voxelize it. I didn't even have to generate any rev any uh, higher resolution. It'll actually take it and use the native resolution to pull that in. So you can see that worked out pretty good. <coughs> so I'm going to go back to the cutter again. I'm actually going to make this make another one of these. Just just I like to keep it since I if I lose that I'm kind of in trouble. So let's archive this uh, and because uh, it does delete it when you do move it. So let's take that. And now let's move it so I kind of go back and forth on this to make sure I get it. there you go there's there okay and then again I duplicate it hide this one right click on this and basically say subtract from main okay so and there you see. Now, I'm going to uh, shut up and continue to do this. So one thing I decided to do is I decided to go ahead and hide hide uh, the stuff on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and hide all this stuff. And that will give me... Um, an easier way to kind of parse these along. So I've got Okay, 
this wall is done I'll go uh, save incrementally and then we're going to go and invert the hidden and now we can work on this stuff so Okay, so now I've got that done. Let's go and let's uh, uh, go into geometry and unhide all. And we should have it pretty well done. There might be, if we look up here, we might get some of these intersections. There might be some little craziness going on. But for the most part, no, it looks pretty good. Okay. So... undo this well no let's not do that so let's go shave save this so now what I want to do is I'm gonna go I'm basically gonna smooth this out so I want to go into my fill again and I'm gonna basically come in here and just kind of you know blur this a little bit so it's not quite so you know so that there's just not so quite you know so perfectly So that took an inordinately long amount of time, and that's because it had to actually, it had to, the, the resolution of this braces model is just too high. So what I'm going to do is with braces selected, I'm going to hit Command R, and I'm going to cut it back from two, ma two million to probably like 1.4, something like that. It'll probably add a little, some little stringies. Usually when it does that, let's see what happens. Okay, so now I can take uh, this one, H, and let's subtract that from braces. That's done, and it looks pretty good. Let's see what... Okay, so let's keep on going. Uh, finish the rest. Okay, so so now I've got the braces done, and I've got a well and a couple gates. So let's look at the gates first. Let's turn off the braces and look at the gates. So the gates are pretty much in line. So I probably want to actually go ahead and take these gates in. Just uh, let's see, there's a gate here. So I'm just going to merge these gates. So this is how we do this. Is you right click on it. Oops. You right click on it and you say merge with move to. 
and since this is what we're going to move this to gate one and so now we have these are both in the same layer and in the same voxel uh, group so that way we can when we get ready to uh, here we are so we're ready to use this so I'm going to actually make this since this is a different kind of this is a gate that was added later uh, and it was walled up I'm going to actually make it a little bit different I think uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go to the top pull this over and move it down I'm about centered on that okay and then I'm going to stretch this out like this and I'm going to stretch this down like this so it's kind of very compact kind of a higher density compact model so And then we'll turn that off. We have the well. Well is, uh, I think we're not going to mess with the well. Well is going to be fine the way it is. We're not going to put any any stuff on there. The main is, oh, actually let's do braces. And let's go into here and let's basically do a little filling on this side too. I'm just going to add a little add a little texture into the uh, into the, uh, uh, the smoother areas of the wall here. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and now the trick is to actually pull all this together into one object. And so I'll probably take the highest resolution. This 1x is higher than the 7, so I'll actually merge the main with gate 1 the well. Let's, let's merge the well with gate 1. Let's see. Uh, merge with gate 1. So now we have the well and gate 1. Actually, let's not do that. Undo that. I turn the well on and gate one on and now we can do it merge with gate one okay so we merge that so now we have only two two voxels left so we'll take the main and we say merge with move to actually let me think about that I think we have good enough. let's 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 merge let's let's take the gate one and merge to main so we're gonna actually it's gonna down sample it but I think we're gonna be all right merge with move to main and the reason why i think we'll be all right is that i don't want to create a super high okay so we're, here we are so now we have everything that we want all in one model and i'm going to save this incrementally and now i just need to convert this into a surface that we can use for baking so first things first i'm going to i have this map this function right here resample map to command r but that's 10 million uh, it's not bad actually that'll work I, uh, so I just click on this now I'm gonna get a, a, a surface model with 10 million polygons and now it's done so now uh, now what I want to do is now that it's in surface I'm gonna incrementally save and I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, de decimate it so under geometry we have decimate And I probably want to bake somewhere between three and five million polys. So I, I typically look around four million to bake. So we're at five million now. So I'll take it about down to about there. Say okay. So the decimates 
uh, this is a really smart decimation. It's a really great decimator 3D code has, I have to say. I've used it for a lot of other things other than just this voxel modeling. I use it to reduce polygons for complex models like the statues in the Alamo, for instance. Just trying to write a backup file. Okay, so if you look at, if you hit the W key for the wireframe, you can start to see how it maintains a certain level of, of, uh, it maintains a certain, you know, a certain level of detail, which is actually still pretty good. Um, so the next thing I want to do is with it selected, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, once again, incrementally save with it selected. I'm going to go onto this geometry and I'm going to say, uh, objectify separate, right? So <laughs> this will create a uh, lot of, uh, I probably want something around 20, I guess 20 would be a good number, but now this is going to take a while. I'm going to hit the pause button, but what it's going to do is it's going to actually only connect. It's only going to, uh, it's going to separate everything into groups of polygons that are connected. So here we go. Okay. So you can see we've got a lot of, uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff. So what I want to do is let's take, turn this off. That gets that. Let's turn this off. Uh, it, it's basically doing it by, and then maybe this will get that. Okay. So these three right here are the main ones. So I'm going to take this and I'll move it up here. And so all the, the hidden ones I'm moving up. This hidden ones I'm moving up. Okay, so then I can just take this one, which is the rest of it, all this little stuff right in here. So this is all that little stuff that was floating around and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to take that and delete it. Okay, it's deleted. So I'm going to save this. So now I have these... Oh, I have these braces. Let's see. Oh, okay, so the braces need, they're still voxelized. So let's go ahead and, and it's just, I forgot to, I forgot to merge those. So let's uh, turn into surfaces and I'm going to basically merge it without uh, anything. I want to get them all in one object because that's what I'm going to use to bake. So I'm going to go into here. And I'm going to right click. I'm sorry. I need to make braces a subtopic of main. And then I'll say merge subtree, no booleans. And what that'll do is it'll move this into here. Let me pause. Okay. So we got that done. And now, uh, if I do again, uh, let's just take these two, this cutter, I'm going to delete that. And this cutter delete that so I'm clean and so now let's go ahead and we want to basically find out how many how many polygons so I can do that by just saying file with that selected export object and we're going to call this the east fence and instead of 3dc I'm going to call it bake Okay, so what it's going to do now is it's going to calculate how many how many polygons it's going to need. So right, the current polygon is five. So I want to move, move it down to probably about I don't know, low four, somewhere in there. Okay, and that worked. And uh, let's save this. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to close down um, 3D coat and go into Substance Painter. I've already done this before, but I'll do it again and get a feel for what we're doing here. Um, I've got another video on this. It goes in a little more detail, but let's go ahead and select the uh, object that we want, which is the uh, the low UV object, right? So that's, uh, this is our object that we have. And if we go into viewer settings, let's see, and turn on wireframe. You can see it's a pretty simple mesh, right? Let's turn off wireframe, go back to texture settings. So what we want to do is we're going to want to bake to that mesh. You know, we've already got a lot of polygons missing because 
we're making this as simple as possible but we're gonna bake we're gonna go ahead and say bake textures and I'm gonna basically say my output size is actually I'll show you how I typically do this I, I'll start with 512 I'm gonna add my bake object I leave this all alone I just go into normal all I want is the normal and the ambient occlusion. Actually, I don't even know the ambient occlusion. I just want normal for right now, because this is going to tell me if I'm a if I'm aligned up, right? If the settings are lined up. So we'll just let this cook through here real quick, and you can see that happened pretty fast and it's very rough. But you can see that, yeah, pretty much it's 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 on target. So let's go back, and I'm going to delete this normal map. I'm going to go back into my bake textures and let's talk about this. So we want as I mentioned earlier, we want the normal and we want an ambient occlusion to map. I always make them at 20, 48. This is the this is the baked up target that we're going to use to, to, to adjust the normals for this and the ambient occlusion width. I'm going to leave these to the defaults. Uh, I turn off average normals. <clears throat> it gets a little bit of an artifacting going on sometimes, so I'm going to leave that off. Any aliasing, I'll go to 4x4. And now I'll say bake front textures. Now it's important. There's only one set of textures here, which you can see up here. The texture set list is just one. That came from our UV map. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'll pause. I'll pause while we're doing this. Okay, here we go. So uh, I think you can see this looks pretty good. This is pretty much is representative. So this is very, again, very simple, very very simple uh, mapping. Uh, or a poly uh, geometry and yet we've got some pretty detailed you know look at these in particular you look at this edges these edges and some of this this stuff the way it's broken down is uh, like up in here see how that, you know there's a big hole in that the wall there where they carve that out we've got something going on over here we've got some more dents over here maybe a cannonball hit it or whatever so uh, so then I go into my materials and I'll add on this concrete and this is just going to add just a little bit more texture to things and then once this is done the next thing to do is to output this in a format that we can uh, take it directly into uh, into unity so let's uh, the way I do that is let's first save this and we'll call this one the east fence so let's and then I right click and say export textures and let's find the right folder which would be here east east fence select that folder and my configuration I set my own configuration chip so I just want to output only the normal and the ambient occlusion so that's my chip normal and ambient occlusion map and say export and it's at 2, uh, 2048 right there so Okay, so that works good. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so let's we'll zoom over to, here's the folder. This is that folder. It's in my Unity projects. I have an assets, models, buildings, and I've got it laid out like this. There's the AO, and there's the normal map. So let's go into Unity. I'm sorry. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> here we are. Okay, so here we are. We're in Unity, and... Uh, now if we look at this folder we just created this east fence folder uh, we see there's nothing in there <laughs> all we have is these images if i click on this image you'll see that it's default so i want to make it a normal map make sure that it is apply it so now we know that's a normal map so i need to put in a model so uh, a couple easy ways to do that is to move them into a folder i can just go in here and say uh import new asset and i can go to here and look for that east fence low UV here it is import and there it is uh, now I have to I know that my settings because of the way I model and sketch up in meters this has to be 0.01 and I'll generate light map just in case I ever need to use that I'm not sure if I'm going to be using light mapping for mobile or not but I generate it I'm hoping that doesn't create any problems I don't think it should but uh, got a little bit of cold. So now that I've got this done, I've opened up my scene. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just drag this fence 
model and drag it directly in here. That puts it at zero, zero, zero. You can see it pops right in there. So what I want to do now is let's go ahead and let's figure out what kind of wall this is. So it's probably the same kind of wall as this. So I'm going to click on this until I get to that. See, it says limestone. I right click right up here next to the word mesh render and I say select material. And that's going to go and it's going to search out that material and find it right here. It is limestone. I'll select it. I hit command D that duplicates it. And I'm going to drag that right into the east fence right there. So now there it is. So there's our limestone. So if I drag this limestone and I put it on here, you'll see that it comes on, but it doesn't look very good. And that's because if we edit the limestone, you'll see that we've got a custom shader. We've got some Adobe or, or some like Adobe mask. This is the white stuff. We've got the base color, which is it. And then we have uh, some dirt and then we have these UVs. So let's go ahead and throw the UVs, all right? The UV and the ambient occlusion on. And now you can see that we're, we're pretty close, but, but it doesn't mean, here's where we split it, by the way. That was the, that's where we split the, the UV split. We can kind of see a little bit of a line there. But once that's done, um, what I'm going to want to do is I want to look at the actual scale of this, of these rocks in here and make sure that they match the scale over here. So, and I think we're pretty close actually. That does look pretty good. Sometimes it is right, sometimes it's not. It depends on how the maps were applied in the, in the UV channel. So notice I've got dirt and you can see it repeating across here, which I don't particularly like. So I'm gonna fix that. So so there's, there's a couple different dirts here. There's this ground dirt and a mount. So that's, what, that's what's being repeated. So, but, but I do have the tiling set to 10. So let's, let's, let's make it a little less five and five. That's a little better. And then I've got this ability to actually, if I look at this, um, I can, uh, set the ground dirt height if I want. So if you look, See the, see the dirt it moves up and down so I'm gonna set it right about where it was but I can do that too and I can basically add more dirt this is this is the default but as you can see I can add, add a lot more dirt I can colorize the dirt all kinds of stuff but we're gonna leave that alone now I want to look at that's pretty good so once I've got that laid out I should be able to just go ahead and drop this on here and this on here and on here and on there. Let's see what else we got. So these are the two gates right here, those two. And those are going to be, I'm going to make those a little bit different. I think I'm going to make those <laughs> more like, use this, this one here, this Alamo ground effect. So I'm going to say copy, uh, Let's go to select material. Here it is. Duplicate it. Call it gate. And the gate I will put oops, in the east fence. So there it is. Close the church up. There's the east fence. So the gate is ha, does not have any of the adobe on it. That's what I like about it. So I'm going to drag that, put it on here, hit the F key so I can zoom up on there. And there's that. And let's take that and uh, let's drag for that gate material. Actually, here too. Actually, this ought to be on here. Okay, yeah, something like this. No, sorry. Limestone goes here. Okay, it goes there, right? And the gate, uh, we will need to add the correct texture maps on there as well and we can see that they're a little bit different not a whole lot different but they are they've got a little more detail they don't have the plaster on there so 
that's where they are. And then I'm going to take that same limestone and drag it over here on this. This is the well. It's kind of dirty, but it works. I'll have to cut a hole in the ground for that, but you get the idea. So let's back up. So don't forget to, once we get this east fence done, let's just collapse everything. Okay, so the east fence that's done, we need to make it static. Oops. Oh, we also need to add to these braces. Let's go ahead those. We'll put wait those on a limestone too. Might have been added later. Limestone. Limestone. And limestone. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna take this material and delete it because I know there's nothing in there because it created that. And it'll show me purple anything that I haven't texture mapped, which is good. So we're in good shape. So I still have another building to put in here, but this is you getting the idea how this works. So we still have a, a little more to do. This this much right over here. So okay, thanks for watching.